Hello guys, this is MakeSimpleDesigns.com My name is Ile and today I'm going to show you how to create a metallic frame button in Photoshop. This is what we will be creating throughout this Photoshop tutorial. It is going to be a three-step tutorial. In the first step we are going to create the frame shape in the inner part of the button. In the second step we are going to make uh, changes to the inner part so it will make it look uh, like in the example and in the third part we are going to create uh, shadows and highlights for the button frame and by the end we will have a result something like this okay so let's get started so the first thing we're going to create is a new layer press ctrl shift n and name the layer frame now make a selection it needs to be 9 centimeters in width and 3 centimeters in height fill it with a dark grayish color 2c 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 press alt delete to fill the selection press ctrl d to deselect and then again make another selection in an inner part and delete Press Ctrl D to deselect. So at the end, we will have a frame that is 9 centimeters in width, 3 centimeters in height, and a thickness of half a centimeter, 0 0.5 centimeters. Now, create a new layer, Ctrl Shift N again, name it Button Core, and make sure to place it right under the frame. Make another selection something like this and fill it with another color this time is going to be an orange color EF7251 click OK with this color set as a foreground alt delete to fill the selection so now you have frame layer and right under it the button core layer and this completes step one. So let's get started with step two. First thing we do, activate the layer style and activate the gradient overlay. Set up the blending mode to be multiply, opacity at 41%, and the gradient has to be set up like this. Color stop at 9% needs to be with color C8 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 press OK the second color stop will be at 19% and it needs to have color 26 26 26 press OK and the last color stop needs to be at 79% and it needs to be pure white six F's or right here in the corner press OK and once again OK the second thing we do we activate inner shadow set the blending mode to be multiply opacity this time is going to be at full 100% angle at 90 degrees distance is going to be 0 pixels choke 0 size is going to be 152 pixels press OK. The last part we're going to create a highlight at the top on the button core and there are a couple of ways to create the highlight. One of the steps is create a new layer Control shift n name it button core highlight set the foreground color to be white pick a brush needs to be and 100 percent is good something as big as this or maybe a little bit bigger and just press one time one time is good enough now go to filter blur and then motion blur set it to 400 pixels press OK you can scale it to make it a little bit bigger and squash it a little bit 
as we said you can even lower the opacity if you want sometimes you can even duplicate the layer intensify the opacity but make it a little bit smaller something like this or even just spread it out a little bit more this is one way to create the highlight the second way to create the highlight is by creating a gradient. Press the gradient, set it to be color to transparent, in this case white to transparent, and to be radial gradient. Create a new layer, button core highlight, make a gradient something like this, and press Ctrl T to scale it. Move it a little bit up, scale it to be a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit something like this, and move it into position. You can lower the opacity so it won't get so intensified, and then you have it. And the third part, and uh, the one that I use at most, is to create a new layer control shift n name it button core highlight pick a brush it needs to be a soft one uh, it needs to have opacity somewhere between uh, 15 and 20 percent 15 is pretty good and then just draw a couple of times let me just turn on the previous example so with the button core highlight selected you can make a selection so it won't go away from this area and the first thing you're going to do is make a couple of strokes and then some more at the middle and that's it you're pretty much finished you can even lower the opacity if you don't want it to pop up too much and we are pretty much done with step two so let's get started with step three so the first thing we do in step three is to create the metallic look of the frame and this is how we do it activate the layer style button and the gradient overlay Set the blending mode to be normal, opacity at 100%, and the gradient has to be set up like this. At 0 and 100% location, it needs to be this color, 2C, 2C, 2C. Press OK. The same goes at 100. 2C, 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 and press OK. At 50% location, it's going to be pure black. You can just pick it up in here or type 6Fs, press OK. And at location 40 and 60, it's going to be this color. E1BB5D, press OK. The same at 60% location. E1BB5D, press OK. OK angle needs to be 0 and the scale has to be 100 percent now click OK the next thing we do in step 3 is create the shadow on the frame and there are two ways to do that the first thing we do is we pick the pen tool and draw a shape as it is shown on the video and what we do is we make a selection and then create a new layer on top of the frame press control shift n name it frame shadow and then we set the foreground color to be 080706 press OK and Alt-Delete to fill the selection. Press Ctrl-D 
to deselect and now what we do is we take eraser tool lower the opacity to be like uh, at uh, probably 15 percent and we use a soft eraser and then we just simply erase parts of the shadow we will zoom in so we will look better and you will just simply just a couple of times erase areas in here in here and sometimes in here and this area you can even make the size of the eraser a little bit smaller so it won't affect a bigger area this is one way to create the shadow of the frame the other way to create a shadow on the frame is with the gradient so we turn off the visibility of the example we have done before so what we do is create a new layer control shift n name it frame shadow we go to path press a key and just right click and make a selection click OK and now you press the G key to activate the gradient tool Color, uh, gradient has to be set up from black to transparent linear gradient and we just simply create a gradient that was too much probably that too something like that now we select the other path we can make a selection by clicking right click and make a selection or we can simply click on this button it says load path as a selection and it will be loaded click once to deselect the path and then click G to activate the gradient tool again it needs to be black to transparent and a linear gradient and just create couple of gradients till you get the result you like press control D and you're done so next thing we do is create the side shadows for the frame first thing we do create a new layer control shift n name it side shadows click OK now go to paths and you need to have created two paths as similar in this load them as a selection now make sure you have side shadow selected press the G key to activate the gradient tool it needs to be set up from black to transparent in a linear gradient and just create it press ctrl D to deselect lower the opacity a little bit and you're pretty much done so the last thing we do is create a highlight at the bottom of the frame first thing we do is create as always a new layer control shift and bottom highlight click OK activate the gradient tool set it to be F49845 color to transparent radial gradient click and drag create something like this press ctrl T and scale it as it comes as a tiny line click OK press the V key to activate the move tool and move it a little bit up so now all you have to do is go to screen and lower the opacity or you can set it to maximum opacity and then with the eraser tool soft eraser and op erasing opacity of 15 percent just erase a couple of times the area at the end at the corner
the only thing that is left is to add a text to the button so name it home set it to be white scale it a little bit up and set it to be so we can make a couple of buttons just to show you how the effect will look like so this is what kind of effect it will have when you stuck a couple of buttons right one after another um, articles contact and um, this is how the buttons will look like if let's make them smaller if you want to if you want to use them as a navigation bar this will move one next to each other I'll move them a little bit more to the middle and then just change the text home or maybe PSD then contact articles the fun part about the buttons is you can instantly change uh, the color of the button just with a simple click so let me show you in here so all you have to do is find the button core hover over its thumbnail click control and left mouse click and it will load it as a selection so all you have to do now is find a new color something that you like and then press alt delete I'm sorry about that make sure that the button core layer is selected press alt delete and instantly you have changed the button to another color the same goes for the other buttons for example like this we, s we hover over the thumbnail of the button core control left click and we load the selection mm, find something greenish make sure to select the button cord hold delete and you've colored it the good part about this is since the layer styles are on the layer itself you can change the the color and it won't affect any gradient or drop shadow or something like this so this is what you're going to create you can push the designs a little bit more you can add textures you can add uh, more effects or just make fine details to the buttons in order to achieve a better result but the core to in creating the metallic frame butter is as we have shown it in this tutorial so thank you for watching guys that's all for now this is makesimpledesigns.com my name is Ile and till the next time